I'd like to introduce you to the concept of wave refraction. And basically I'm going to start with telling you what refraction is, and then we're going to look at some diagrams in order to try to explain why refraction happens. So refraction is basically a change in the direction of wave propagation due to a change in the medium. And the whole reason why this happens is because different mediums can have different speeds of propagation. So let's just start with thinking about this idea of different speeds of propagation and what kind of mediums have slower and faster speeds of propagation. And I'm going to start with just giving you a little list. So here's a few simple things for different kind of waves. For water waves, shallower medium has a slower speed of propagation, so shallow water. For a sound wave, colder air is slower than warmer air. And for a light wave, traveling through glass is a slower speed of propagation than traveling through air. So let's quickly sketch what happens when a wave changes medium and if it goes from a faster to a slower medium. So I'm just gonna sketch a straight propagating wave and I'm gonna start in the faster medium and then I'm going to have some kind of a boundary. So here is my boundary and then we're wondering what happens as this wave propagates across this boundary. Now this could be any kind of wave. It could be a water wave, it could be a sound wave, it could be a light wave. It's going from the faster medium to the slower medium. One thing that cannot change is the frequency. So the frequency has to stay the same. And the reason is the frequency is really just a function of the source. So the frequency is the same as the source frequency. Well, if the frequency stays the same, and we know the velocity is decreasing, so our velocity is decreasing, then we know from our basic formula that V equals F times lambda that our wavelength has to also decrease. So that means on the other side of this barrier, my wave fronts are going to be closer together. And exactly how close obviously depends on how much slower the medium is. I'm going to exaggerate it so you can easily see it here. And you can kind of think intuitively that this makes sense because this wave here was traveling faster and then as it hits this transition it travels slower so therefore the wavelength has to be smaller the wave crests have to be closer together I'm going to take you to a really cool simulation of a ripple tank made by Paul Falstad so if you would go to this link up here it'll take you to this simulation and a ripple tank is basically like a tank of water not too deep where we make some sort of wave in it usually there's a light underneath it or above it so we can sort of see the reflections that show our wave crests and troughs this simulation is really cool and you should go here and play with it yourself too now I just have to do a couple of quick setup things in order to make our simulation do what I want I'm going to clear the waves that are here and then I want to add a line source rather than a point source and let me just stop this thing from going for now so for right now I want our line source to basically take up the entire width of the screen and I'll bring it to one end straighten it out here let's clear the waves and then I wa also want to add a shallower region in the water so I'm just going to make the whole bottom half of this to be a shallower region uh, you might be noticing that wherever I click on the screen actually becomes a wave if I continue it again. I'm just going to clear so we s start over and you'll see as the waves hit this new transition or hit this new medium you can see, I'll stop it, that the wavelength down here is a lot smaller than it was up here. So I think that pretty well illustrates the change in wavelength from a faster to a slower medium but so far we have no change in direction so where does this idea of refraction come from where it says change in direction? Well, all we have to do in order to get our angle is to ch switch our transition to be at an angle. So I've copied and pasted everything that I had down to this new diagram, except for this time I'm drawing my transition, my change of medium, at an angle. We're still going from the faster side to the slower side. What do you think is going to happen to the wave fronts? Well, you might think, well, the next wave front is still going to be steady here, but now the end of it is going to hit, the transition is going to go in the slower medium. Well, the piece of it that's gone in the slower medium cannot keep up with the original part of the wave because it's going slower. So it's going to look something like this. It, it just can't keep up. So the same thing with the next wave. looks the same until it hits the medium, and then the next section can't really keep up. 
and we can fit one more little piece of wave in our fast section and then of course in the slow section it can't really keep up so the piece across the transition would look like this and then you can imagine that the next waves would look kind of like this which are no longer on the fast side of the transition at all and now I want you to compare the two well we still have that our frequency stays the same we still have that our velocity is decreasing and we still have that our lambda or our wavelength has to decrease because of the same formula but now if we were to draw the direction of propagation of our new waves remember we always draw that at a right angle so over here I could have drawn this as being a right angle or direction of propagation well now I'd have to draw it like this and now it's at an angle to our original still at a right angle to our wave fronts so what happened here was our direction of propagation changed angle again let me just show you what this would look like based on Paul Falstad's ripple tank I just moved our line our source to be at an angle and now you'll see that indeed the angle of propagation in the slower medium is different than the angle of propagation in the faster medium I just want to quickly comment on what looks like some odd behavior going on in this area here where it's not just the nice straight waves which we had emanating from our line source well I want you to recall how that when a wave goes from a faster medium to a slower medium some of it is reflected I'm just showing you Dan Russell's animation again from Penn State University. So the same thing happens with our ripple tank. As the wave goes from a fast medium to a slow medium, some is also reflected, and it's going to be reflected at an angle based on the law of reflection. And then those reflected waves are going to interact with the existing or the original waves. And this is what's called interference. We're going to get into interference a little later. But that's why we kind of have some funny wave fronts in the other direction heading out this way. That's just a very brief reason of why that happens. I really am focusing right now more on the refraction happening in the shallower water. So it's a simple next step to think about what would happen if our water goes from shallow to deep. So I'm just going to move the shallow portion of our ripple tank to be underneath the source, and then we'll see what happens. So now there, our waves are starting out slower, and they have to speed up as they get to our new medium, and you'll see then that the angle has to change. So again, the angle changes, but this time the angle gets steeper. So if you would have imagined on my sketch here that it went from slower to faster, our angle would have actually changed the other way, and we would have had an angle that looked something like this when we were done. Just I'm just going to put this in brackets here. It's not really what happened, but if we would switch our speeds around, that's what would happen. And notice that's without changing the angle of our barrier, just changing which one is faster and which one is slower. Dan Russell also has a page dedicated to the refraction of sound, so I'm going to bring you there for a minute. So he also has a pretty cool diagram which is animated, sort of the way I drew it, and you can see the waves can be, um, changing angle as they refract into a different medium. And But he gives a scenario with it, and this is a real life scenario and shows us why refraction is actually important. So suppose you're camping on the shore of a lake, which is not too wide, maybe half a mile across or so, during the day you can see campers on the other side of the lake but you cannot hear them at night however you can not only see the campers on the other side of the lake but you can also hear their conversations as they sit around their campfire this phenomena is due to the refraction of sound waves so whether you can hear somebody across the other side of the lake is because of refraction and then he goes on to explain why basically in sound waves as I mentioned uh, a more dense medium like cold air is a slower medium than fast air so the sound waves will refract toward the slower medium so what's happening is at night when the cool air is toward the ground and the warm air is rising up into the sky since warm air rises then the sound is going to bend toward the cool air so it's going to stay close to the ground it's going to bend toward the ground compared to during the day when the sound waves will refract upward because the cooler air is upward and the, there's heat close to the ground. So this is an actual effect of the refraction of sound. And Dan Russell goes on to say that um, 
this very effect could have influenced several civil war battles because of people being able to hear what was said on the other side or, or something like that. So very interesting. So I quickly want to mention a few applications. We have um, how that sound travels, for example, across a lake based on the temperature of the air. For water waves, it's pretty obvious. We can think of uh, water in a bay or in a shallower area. The direction of the water waves are going to change based on where the water is shallower or deeper. So this might affect um, where we need to do reinforcements along the shoreline to prevent erosion. It also has uh, important applications in light. So here's a quick little picture of what a straw or a pencil might look like in a glass of water. And the reason that this pencil appears to be bent is not because it's actually bent, it's because the light changes direction when it goes into the water, which is a slower medium than air. So it's exactly the same thing happening with all these different types of waves as they change direction by going from one medium to another based on the speed of that medium.